the more the merrier. <laughs> I've shut the door so the cat will might scratch, but won't shouldn't come in. Hopefully. Ooh, ooh. Murphy's here, but he's on. He's been on strict orders to be on his best behaviour. So I hope, <laughs> Mim. <laughs> So here we are, and I can see <laughs> Sarah's on screen. Um, we've got participants going up and up and up. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to give it a, a minute or so just um, to allow time for everybody to, to sign on. And um, yeah, we'll get started in just a sec. Um, oh. Right, so uh, while everybody's signing on, I'll just say hello again. Um, thanks so much for joining us this evening and um, I hope you're settled in nicely um, with a glass of wine or a beer. I've got a glass of wine. I started early. <laughs> um, and we're really excited to have Sarah with us this evening um, and to talk all about ultras. Um, we've got Kate here as well. And for those of us or for those of you watching who are thinking to themselves, who's this weird American lady? I'm Mary. I'm the brand development manager for Team Harrier. Um, so before we get going, I just want to say a couple of housekeeping bits. Um, firstly, can I just check that everyone can hear me okay? I think a few of you have got, um, have already started using the chat button, but there's a little chat button on the um, menu at the bottom. If you could all just drop a yes or a hello or something in that, just so I can see, yep, you can all hear me. That's brilliant. Thank you. As we go through the evening, um, on the right hand side, there's a Q&A button. If you've got any questions for Sarah or for Kate or for me, um, can you please just pop it in that and not in the chat? So if you've got a question for, for one of us, pop it in the Q&A. If you want to just chat to other people, use the chat. Um, that would be brilliant. Thank you. Um, Obviously, we're not expecting any technical issues, but if anything does happen, please bear with us and we'll try to sort it out as quickly as possible. Some questions uh, we'll probably answer as we go along and some we might leave until the end. So like I said, pop it in the box and we'll, we'll have a look and, um, and we'll get to it when we can. So before we get started talking to Sarah, I thought it would be fun to do a little quiz or a, a rather would you rather poll. So I'm going to launch this <laughs> and <laughs> hopefully, hopefully there are other people who are fans <laughs> of Barkley and I'm not just the only one here, um, but uh, let's see what everyone has to has to say about this. Would you rather be the human sacrifice at Barclay, which means you're like the charity position, you have absolutely no chance of winning, but he's given you a place, <laughs> or do you want to be the first DNF at Big Big's Backyard Ultra? And oh, we're getting a lot of responses here and it's quite yeah i'm going to give people a few more seconds to respond but i think we have a we have a clear winner right here we go i'm going to end it and i'm going to share it what do you guys think <laughs> what would you choose sarah before i share it what would you choose human sacrifice without a doubt <laughs> <laughs> you are in good company i think yeah <laughs> everybody wants to be the human sacrifice i think even though like i would have no chance at all i'd just get chewed up on rat jaw the first time around you'd want to do it wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> um we're really excited to have sarah with us this evening uh i think probably a lot of you were tuned in during easter weekend when we were sharing um the results of the Cowshed Backyard Ultra as Sarah went around loop after loop after loop until finally she was the last runner standing. And those of you who've been following Harrier for a little while know that she's part of our content creator team. Um, she makes some really sick 
reels for us and she goes on some really cool adventures in the Lake District. Um, so hopefully you're all following us on, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's really, it's fun following um, the running that you you and Luke do. And I know you've got some exciting things in the pipeline too. So welcome, Sarah, thanks for, thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me on. As I was saying, I'm, um, I'm just surprised that people want to hear me talking. <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good evening. Fab. Um, so congrats again on the, the win at Cowshed. How, how are you doing now? How are the legs? I'm, I'm good. Thank you. I think I took a few days afterwards to kind of um, do a little bit of walking and cycling. I had a few days off. Um, and then we, we actually went to Wales because it was it was part of our holidays that we're taking off. Um, part of my half term, part of Luke's holidays. Hmm. So we um, we actually went and did some some of the offers dike, which is one of my upcoming um, challenges. Um, so that was fun. So we should, I was all right after the first few days. I think um, I think with the format, you know, you've got an hour to do four point two miles. Yeah. Um, very kind of gentle. Uh, the pace is very gentle, and so. Um, yeah, recovery was swift. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Is that pretty standard for, for recovery from an ultra? Would you say just lots of walking and cycling and taking it easy generally? I think, yeah, I think generally I do. I like to keep my legs moving. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am one of those annoying people that likes to run every day. So <laughs> or do something outside every day um and so if I am recovering if I do need a bit of time I do like to to do a bit of what like just take Murphy out for a walk or you know a bit of cycling um but yeah I like to get get running again as soon as possible <laughs> yeah I know what you mean um Cowshed that wasn't your first backyard win was it because I think you you won another backyard ultra last year did I went to Wales um last year that was my first uh, backyard ultra and I, I just thought it would be a fun thing to do um, I liked the look of the format mm. and it looked like it was going to be quite competitive so we went down there it fit in, fitted in with my holidays um, and the, it wasn't a, there wasn't a massive amount of people and what I found was that people that were doing it were there to kind of run a distance PB and I think a backyard ultra is brilliant in terms of that because it's yeah. it's like the best supported ultra that you'll ever do you've got a checkpoint every 4.2 miles um so people would drop so people were kind of doing like a marathon or the first ultra or their first mm. 50 um and I think we made it to 84 85 miles um so that that was it that was that was all that was needed for the win there but it was a oh, great wow. great experience um met some lovely people um and the other thing that i think was great going somewhere different to do a backyard ultra is that thing of just kind of like blending in you know yeah people, this one lots of people i like, knew lots of people which was lovely it was a different vibe completely um but yeah, it's just it was just a really different um, experience, and that was. Yeah, good. I think it's it's probably less pressure for you if people don't know you and don't know what you're capable of. You can just get on and get running, and you don't have to think about competition. Hundred uh, percent. Just get your head down, and you know, I think some people said to me when I was like one of the like, oh, I didn't even realize you were there. <laughs> just blame. <laughs> but it was lovely it was great and uh, I think it's trail events so they were a lovely bunch um yeah it was fun <laughs> do you have any tactics for a looped race like that I think as we were talking about it's that thing where you just just do the 4.2 miles see how you feel I think it's great in terms of like you're almost forced to eat and drink on like within the hour every yeah. hour because that's all you're focusing on you don't need to worry about the route 
or about the logistics or anything else. It's just get around your 4.2 miles, eat, drink, make sure your kit's fine, and then off you go again. Um, I think just another thing was, I guess it, 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 and it applies to any ultra that you do too. Like sometimes you're not going to feel great, especially if you're racking up a lot of miles. Mm. Um, and I think it was just get out, just do another 4.2 and then see how you feel. And it's just that thing of just do another, just do another, do another. And actually in a few laps, you might feel okay. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's it in terms of tactics. I think, yeah. yeah. And it's a small distance, isn't it, really? That when you think about it, actually, you, you know, you can walk back to camp if you're not feeling great. And okay, you might time yourself out, but it's you're ne you're never too far away from where you need to be. Yeah, you're never more than two point one miles away, which you know that's less than a part run, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. If for for cowshed, how how long do you think you could have gone on if it didn't finish? So, I think that second night would have been trickier, just in terms of sleep deprivation, but also in terms of like the first night there was lots of people around and I think one thing that I learned quickly was that if you keep talking to people keep your brain working that keeps you very kind of alert and awake Um I think if I'd have got through that second night I'd have been fine I was comfortable in terms of like the running um so yeah I don't know I don't know and I think that's an interesting question because in a way there's like something in my brain where <laughs> I want to know how far any yards I could actually do before I break <laughs> yeah what's the what's the longest distance you've ever run Continuous, um, like yeah like 190 miles um okay. like a massive amount but I'm <laughs> <flapping up. laughs> but I mean like I don't know there's something about ultra run is isn't there where like I don't know like I know a lot of people that have run a hundred miles and it almost becomes very normalized <laughs> and then yeah. you, start, you know what I mean um so yeah I'm not saying that in a like a, you know that sort of way but yeah but I'm always looking at doing more and yeah it's never yeah. enough I think that's it's it's an interesting idea of of wondering where that limit is for yourself and trying to find it and I think for a lot of ultra runners that's that's the ultimate goal really is in a strange kind of way it's just finding out where mm. where you have to stop and where you can't go on and that is addictive isn't it because it's it like finding out the realms of your own possibilities I think it's re like really yeah it's really addictive <laughs> yeah but it's cool because it's like you know there's certain types of of running that are really competitive but from a speed perspective and ultra running just transcends that completely it's not about speed it's just about you and and how far you can go um yeah it's we could we could talk about that for for a long time i'm <laughs> sure get really philosophical <laughs> But even more so with the backyard ultra, with it being like 4.2 miles for an hour, mm. you know, I think even more so, it doesn't matter how fast you are. Although some people do get timed out. So I don't know. Anyway, that's another yeah. story. With um, with an event like this, do you get any any weird cravings after a certain distance? Do you have any weird snack habits? Um, Not cravings as such, because I think... And uh, like a thing that I always do if I'm running or if I'm planning to run a long way is I make sure that I'm eating well, like particularly at the start in case there's a point where I can't eat as well. So I'm probably, I won't, don't want to say overeating, but I was just eating like for this one, for example, for example I was eating very well. So no cravings as such, um, but I do like a pot noodle. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit <laughs> not not just every day for everyday food might I add but during an ultra I like a pot noodle um do you just, eat it like 
in the pot with the sauce or do you do what some ultra runners have done which to me is just unfathomable and that is spread it on a sandwich and then use the sauce as gravy i've never heard of that but um yeah well, no <laughs> no Luke, that's maybe. like extra carbs right there because you've got the bread top well, tip people that. watching I think I'll give that a go. I just think it's really easy to eat. It's just really mm. easy to eat. It doesn't really taste of anything. And it's a good whack of like carbs and fat, isn't it? Yeah. So well rounded <laughs> meal. Yeah. Do you find you get like um taste fatigue or you know? Do you, like for me, the further I go, the more I want savory. I can't stand sweet things. I don't want anything sweet. Kind of over I just, 20 I think, miles. I think I just get to a point where I just don't want to eat, but I know that if I keep eating, I'll feel better. And I'm just, I think more like lately, I've been trying to avoid sweet things. I mm. think that like, it's some so easy isn't it to just grab something sweet but actually um it's easy it's easy to overload on sweet things and then end up feeling sick so I have especially for the backyard ultra um we tried kind of like pretzels salted potatoes nice. and just like just kept up with the with the savory things yeah I want pretzels now that you've mentioned that um <laughs> <laughs> you were you were Cowshed's first ever female champion so was that in your mind when you were running um I think we got to a point where I was the last female mm. and some of the, the 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 males that were left shook my hand and said like well done you're the last female and there was a little bit of confusion for me around that because hang on where competing against each other <laughs> like I'm not in a different category to you and that's one of the things that I love about a backyard ultra because like we were saying it completely the playing field is completely even and yeah. we are each other and it is very achievable for a woman to win so and then the other the other flip side of that I guess is that um it's a bit like I guess part of my race prep is always um like imagining that if I'm doing a race imagining that I'm going to finish it like I picture myself finishing that race yeah uh, I guess with the cow shed in some ways there was an aspect where I had to imagine myself finishing and winning mm -hmm. <laughs> in order to keep going because otherwise what are you running for you just you just laugh you just you, you know there's yeah. if you're not and then what's the point <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah that's really cool that's a cool way of thinking of it actually because yeah you must you have to have that in your head otherwise there's there's no point even starting really unless I suppose unless you're one of those people that is just doing that sort of event to do a distance pb which is yeah. you know it is a good way to approach that sort of event in lots of ways and maybe just to see how far you can go but in my mind, I think that's just how I work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to rewind a little bit here, Sarah, because we've been talking a lot about um, the the cow shed. But I want to go back to the very beginning. When did you when did you start running? When did you start trail running? Probably is a better yeah. question. I think I did. I've always done a little bit of running. I did a bit of kind of cross country in school and things like that. And then I think when I started my first teaching job. I think that's when I really started trail running. Um, I think initially for kind of health and fitness, and then I realised that it was a really good tool um, for kind of managing stress. Um, and I think all of that kind of played hand in hand. And it just, I think having a bit of an addictive personality perhaps too, I think I just pushed and pushed and pushed the distance um and then got a trail dog <laughs> and got a trail boyfriend <laughs> so I think it, you it know follows. <laughs> it sort of steamrolls yeah, and then before you know it you're you're running 200 miles <laughs> so I think yeah I mean I start I did my first couple of ultras on my own 
and then I met Luke and we did some ultras together and then yeah I think I just as I say I just looked at bigger and bigger and bigger distances until I'd done 100 and then when you do 100 you think you're going to be done and then you want to do more <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a slippery <laughs> definitely it's never enough um do you have a, a trail fail what's your what's your biggest trail fail would you say so i i don't know if, if you'd call it a trail fail but i guess um on my on when i did the first the first time i did the course to course it was a mark bain race um and f for whatever reason it i started in trail shoes when it was a it was predominantly a road race <laughs> oh, no. and it was a bit of a fail because I ended up with well a multitude of it, it, it eventually I ended up walking pretty much walking the last 40 miles which was a bit of a trail fail um <laughs> yeah <laughs> death so, march but <laughs> and you say that was the the first time that you did the the coast to coast yeah so that was um it wasn't like I guess it was the psych it was the cycling route the coast to coast oh, okay. white white haven to time mouse so it's like yeah. it is really road um and I think that is what sparked my slight obsession with the coast to coast really because yeah because <laughs> that's what I was going to ask what inspired you to to take it on because I think after that I was looking at bigger distances yeah um, I knew about Alfred Wainwright I knew about we'd spent time in the lakes um so I knew about the Wainwrights and I saw the the Wainwrights coast to coast I knew it would be a beautiful route but also it um it it's the dales the lakes the moors and i've spent quite a lot of time in all of those areas or i did spend a lot of time in my childhood walking mm -hmm. with my parents in a lot of those areas so in a way it was it was quite familiar to me and it almost felt a little bit nostalgic like i knew a lot of the route already yeah um did that knew i could do it faster so went back again <laughs> and did it <laughs> A little bit faster um with a bit more support and we kind of organized it a bit better but yeah and, and you got the fkt yes which is brilliant so congrats on that <laughs> is Can it still honest? i i didn't even look is it still standing um, we're not i'm not sure i haven't checked um i don't know i don't know i think someone will definitely beat it it's very beatable mm -hmm. um I think when we when we went the second time it was it was very wet the streams were were very very full um and some of the some of the checkpoints Luke couldn't get to because the roads were flooded um in the lakes but yeah I hope that someone comes and beats my time and I hope that they ask me out to help to help them with yeah, that yeah that, that I think that's like the I suppose the ultimate honor isn't it is helping somebody else do that and I know um you've got some plans to to run with Johnny Hewlett um next month because he's going to do a Bob Graham isn't he mm -hmm. yeah really excited for that that should be good um we were out we've been out on a couple of Bob Graham's part rounds haven't we we've actually got his and another person's in summer um so yeah that should be fun yeah and um you you spoke or we spoke uh yesterday i think it was about about bob graham because i was asking if you had any plans to um to give it a go yourself and i think you i'm correct in saying you you already have but but you didn't do it inside the 24 hours so that's unfinished business isn't it um fortunately we i don't know why I, on reflection i don't know why you went out in february to do it because it's a win <laughs> and you know it's it's hard enough it's um it's it's a, it's really easy to underestimate but I mean it was icy and snowy in parts and we had to get the ice axes out um on one section in particular um it was an experience and do you know I, I don't regret it because I learned so much um and we finished it just not within the 24 hours so yeah we're definitely going back and hopefully hopefully have 
<laughs> convince Luke to come along with me too. So that should be good. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, we're, we'll look forward to that for sure. Um, do you, do you work with a coach? How do you, how do you set your training? Do you, is that something you do yourself or? Yeah, I, I have threatened to, to, to get a coach for a while now, but I mean, nothing's going drastically wrong. And <laughs> I guess things could go better. That's the thing, isn't it? That's the reason to get a coach. Um, but generally what, what I like to do is like I do I run for fun and I run for mm. how it makes me feel. Um, and I think if I was to make that more regimented, I think that would perhaps take some of the fun away from it for me. Yeah. Um, and like our weekend, like, you know, I think I get a lot of what you should be doing. I think I get a lot of what you should be doing in there. I get my back to back runs, I get some hills in, I get some um, faster running during the week. Um, getting a good base mileage I think that's everything <laughs> yeah well I do you know what I was listening to a podcast with um Courtney DeWalter she doesn't have a coach she doesn't even have a training plan she just wakes up in the morning she has a cup of coffee and then she decides what she wants to do and I think she's just amazing really but I mean I suppose after you've been running for for a long time like you get a decent idea yourself of of what's required to compete in these types of events and if you've got you know you've got a hundred miler coming up you know you need to build your volume and and you'll you'll have an idea um but as you say there there could be that that slight element that a coach could provide which could tip the balance a little bit marginal gains I suppose yeah. but I mean the other thing is because I'm not really running very fast I'm running you know relatively slow for a long time and maybe maybe I don't know I don't know it's just it's different isn't it ultra running is just different yeah. <laughs> do you have would you say you have any bad habits when it comes to your running and your training maybe just junk miles I think because I you know how I talk about kind of running for fun and how it makes me feel I sometimes think that that leads to lots of kind of empty miles that aren't doing anything for me and maybe tiring me out more than than I should be um but yeah as long as it's fun I'm not bothered <laughs> I think we're all guilty of that a bit because uh you know, trail running is, it's about that adventure. And we'll all, you know, say yes to a friend who wants to go and run, you know, 10 miles or something. And we think, well, that's nothing really. I'll, I'll go along and I'll join them and not realize that that could mess up what you've got planned for the weekend, but you do it because it's fun. And yeah. Um, uh, it, it's exactly what you said it's the adventure do I want to go and run 20 miles around the lakes with Luke's on Saturday yes <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause us for a second because I've got another poll for everybody who's joined us um so this one is about ultra training um so I'd really I'm I'm going to launch it now. What do you what do you all find the most challenging about ultra training? Is it finding the time? Is it breaking through mental barriers? Maybe you've got I think we all suffer with stomach issues from time to time. Maybe it's or even just knowing what to eat to fuel or even keeping motivated. Gosh, if we're if we're running, you know, hundreds of miles you've really got to put in the training and some days you wake up and you really just don't want to do it so be cool to see what everybody struggles with so I'll just give a oh, uh, another couple of seconds uh, for people to make a selection and it's kind of oh it's a bit even actually it's funny how I can see this and you guys can <laughs> I'm going to, um, we've got most people answered and it looks like it's finding the time. So I'm going to share this. Oh, I think have we lost Sarah. Here, I'm here. You're there. You're there. I just can't see you. 
here I am I'm back <laughs> fabulous so um yeah it's finding the time and uh diet and nutrition is next but actually finding the time Sarah was something that I was going to ask you because I know you work as a teacher so how 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 do you find the time to to fit everything in because you've got prepping and marking and running how do you do it the first thing I have to say really is that I'm very lucky in that besides Murphy and Luke <laughs> I don't have any other responsibilities so you know outside of teaching I can allocate and they both run so I can allocate really as much time as I want to run in so really I'm lucky in that sense but then I do I do do I do manage my time well in the I commute a run commute to work some days um so that's a good way to get get the miles in um yeah so I do I do yeah that's it really run commute <laughs> to get What's, another two runs <laughs> uh, what distance is it that you you run to school generally six and a half miles so it's you know it's not too bad it's quite that's, manageable yeah it's nice yeah oh that's good do your students know about your running and um are they are they excited about it have you inspired any of them to take it up they do they see me they see me run into them from work <laughs> but um, <laughs> no um after i did the we might course course the second time there was like a little newspaper article about me in the local newspaper in the oh. education section which was quite nice and they were they were so excited they loved it they thought it was and you know I think it's nice for them to see that I do other things outside of work because they do just imagine that I'm sat at work <laughs> yeah. and they, you know during the evenings and um weekends and it's nice for them to know that I do actually have a life outside of teaching too but I don't know if I've inspired any of them to run we try the daily mile for a for a good amount of time um <laughs> but no I don't think any of them are taking up running anytime well soon. you know you never know and it might be in a few years time I know my daughter who I never thought in a million years would would take up running went off to uni and then within about a month of being there was asking if I could send her a pair of running shoes because she'd started running and I thought hell had truly frozen over because there's no way this kid was ever gonna run and uh, run with her uh yes yeah when she came home for uh for Christmas I've, I've gone on a, a couple of runs with her which is really like because my son plays tennis and he's always been really active and everything and he would come to park run with us um and and do that but it was a really special moment when when that happened so yeah it's it's cool when you think gosh they have been paying attention to what I've been doing it has had some effect <laughs> <laughs> what do you um well I suppose this is a bit of a redundant question but what do you do when when you're not running because it sounds like you're running a lot <laughs> I'm usually probably thinking about running or traveling somewhere to do some running <laughs> I really I'm really dull I don't have a life outside of teaching and running <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> Eating pot noodles. No. <laughs> that sounds good to me. That sounds good to me. Do you have um a favorite race distance or format, would you say? Or are you still looking? I'm still looking, but I think the longer the better. Sometimes sometimes I feel like it takes takes me about 50 miles to get into a race. Oh god, um, tell me about it. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still looking. I'm still, I'm really interested in doing some longer things and mm -hmm. seeing how that suits me. So I'm not undecided. I think that's good. And I think it'll be exciting for, to watch and, and see what happens um, for sure. I've got another poll for everybody. Uh, and that is about training again but if you're training for an ultra right now what distance is your race i'm really curious i'll give it a couple of minutes for everybody to 
to answer. Ooh, a few hundred milers. Well done. Over a hundred miles. Amazing. Um, I'm intrigued to know what over a hundred mile races people are doing. Yeah, I know. Um, a few people have uh, have messaged us on Instagram that have been doing like the Wild Horse 200 races. Yeah, they look amazing. I know, because like Wales is is just another level. My son is at uni in Bangor, um, which is just like it's the most beautiful place because you've got the sea and then you've got Snowdonia and you've got Anglesey. Uh, I was like, dude, you have just you have won <laughs> with the, your uni choice here. Um, I'm going to share the results. We've got, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but the majority of people are, are running 50 kilometers plus. And then we've got a few hundred miles and three people running over a hundred miles. So that's awesome guys. Um, and this is probably a, a good time for me to, um, to mention about Harrier's how to run a hundred miles resource. Um, if you guys haven't spotted it on the website yet, do check it out. Um, it's, it's a resource that we've put together with um, Ronnie Staten and Dan Summers, and it's chock full of tip strategies. It's got downloadable resources um, to help you prepare. And it's actually, it's for any ultra distance. You know, there are tips and things that you can apply to any distance, whether that's 50 kilometers or, or over a hundred miles. Um, so uh, if you haven't had a look, it's under main menu and then help and how to run a hundred miles. Um, I, think, I think you'll find it really useful. So back to you, Sarah, what's, what's next in the race calendar? Um, I'm really looking forward to Offers Dyke. I mm. know I think I've done that already, but um, I really, I think that that sort of distance is good for me. I think it's 180 miles. And I just love the idea of running the length of Wales. And plus it's a national trail. It's nice to run an entire national trail. I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, and then after that, I'm not sure. I think I, I'll have to go back to the drawing board after that and <laughs> yeah, see what I can come up with. I think something longer is on the drive sometime soon. Yeah, could it could the Pennine Way feature in there? Do you think? Definitely interested. The thing with that is, I'd like to do it within the race and yeah. being tied to um, school holidays. You know, I'm not sure when that would happen, but I'm very interested, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a brutal time of year there, so, um, yeah. That's part of the challenge, though, isn't it? Absolutely, I think that, yeah. But... <laughs> it's fine, but, I mean, I, personally, I would want to do the winter one. I just don't think it would be the same. Yeah, no, that's that's a good that's a good point. Um, we've got some viewers questions for you. Um, I'm going to start off with, we've had a few from Instagram today. Um, and the first one is how do you fuel your, your long training and races? I know, I know you mentioned about a pot noodle, but is there <laughs> like, do you have a, do you have a meal that you'd eat the night before? How do you normally? I guess I do try and carb load the night before or even like the week before I try and eat more carbs um nothing specific just make sure that I am eating more carbs mm. um and then um and not like a usual breakfast of the morning like nothing different just porridge and then as I said I'm trying more to focus on um like savory food mm. so things like um like pretzels as we said things like um potatoes potatoes three different ways <laughs> Just, <laughs> oh god my partner would absolutely love that he lives on potatoes yeah <laughs> loads of potatoes um and then you know i do supplement all of that with some with some sweet food too because it is just easy to grab isn't it even things like kendall mint cake really great in terms of being fueled with carbs and just easy to eat too yeah uh, yeah just I think that I think that's it and sometimes you know sometimes I'll have a bacon sandwich 
that much. Sorry, any vegans, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you have any uh, a top tip for somebody who's running their first ultra? Um, I think enjoy it. Don't worry about how long it's going to take you. Mm. If, it, if you're the last person over the line, it does not. It doesn't matter. You've set your challenge of finishing an ultra, and if you walk half of it, that's fine too. All ultra runners do some walking. Um, I think yeah just do your best to enjoy it and it's not always going to be it's not always going to be you know the best you might have some lows um but the, yeah. they, pass, they do pass don't they yeah yeah absolutely I think I was saying before we we kicked this off um I just went checkpoint to checkpoint with my first ultra so I knew I had nine miles to run to the first checkpoint, and I was always on, uh, of the opinion that I was I could drop out at any point. At any point, if I didn't feel good enough to continue, well enough to continue, I'd drop out. And I ran 20 miles before I'd even realized it. So um, yeah, I think, as you say, just enjoy it and just take it one step at a time. And that's all you can do, really. Maybe, actually, that's where the backyard ultra format is great if you want to push your distance if you want to run your first ultra hmm. so supported and it's so and like you're saying it's just 4.2 miles you know yeah um, yeah yeah definitely um speaking of of backyard ultras a couple of people have asked how how you cope with going around the same loop so many times <laughs> um I guess in the earlier stages, there was lots of chat. There's lots of people out in the earlier stages. There was lots of chat. Um, and then I, I guess you get to a point where you just have to zone out. <laughs> I think when I thought that Paul might be set for that second night, I put my headphones in and I started listening to some music and just because mm -hmm. um, I thought there was, you know, might be a long night. But yeah, I think you've just got to stay focused um and just keep running it just keep focusing on 4.2 miles sometimes when I was on my way around I was just thinking about what I was going to have when I got in or what I need to change or what I need to do <laughs> um just keep keeping my mind it, both sides of it I suppose in one sense keeping your mind occupied but then other other times just zoning out completely yeah yeah it's probably got to be a balance I guess um Anna wants to know how much strength and conditioning do you do um I don't I don't do very much um I do think that because I do quite because recently I've been doing quite a lot of hills on the weekend I think that is almost like free strength and conditioning um but I do a little bit on a morning um just literally like 10 minute YouTube videos lunges um and that sort of thing nothing fancy like literally just typed into youtube strength and conditioning for runners yeah um, fancy but it it seems to work yeah yeah absolutely i don't think like you don't have to have you don't have to have huge amounts of gym equipment i know a, a friend of mine was like just body weight exercises will will do and yeah i think it's just making time for that I yeah think, like, Last year, I wasn't doing any of that. And I do feel stronger, even just for doing that like 10 minutes, five days, 10, 15 minutes, five days a week. It might not be making a difference, but I feel like it is. I feel like I'm doing something that I should do as a runner. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Yvette's dropped in a question. Would you be tempted by an FKT on Offers Dyke? Um, the thing is, you can't get an FKT during a race so I would have to do the race and then assess whether it was something that I wanted to do or wanted to try the route looks lovely um I mean we went down after the backyard ultra for a few days <laughs> and yeah. we felt like we'd wrecky loads of it but because we, we were doing out and backs I think we ended up wrecking like maybe 25 miles of it or something like that and when I was plotting it on the map to see which bits I'd done it was like hardly any of it at all but um, <laughs> the bits that I've seen do look really nice but 
um yeah I'll do the raise and then I'll see what I think <laughs> yeah yeah um Sarah wants to know if you've got any tips for multi um multi-day races anything to do in the evening or I, have to, I haven't done any multi-day events I've done like continuing like non-stop events that have ended up being multi-day but I've never done a multi-day so I'm really interested to find out um maybe it's not really probably not my sort of thing but I'm interested to find about um what they're like so I think is Sarah doing Ultra X maybe yeah yeah I'm interested in that I hadn't heard of that before and Hmm. um looking forward to hearing what she thinks of that <laughs> yeah yeah it will be really cool to um to hear about her experience for sure um I've got another question here about what your training was like for ultras in the beginning like when you first started doing ultras did how how did that come about did you run a marathon or did you just go straight in um I think I was just trail running and I think I just I was just pushing myself and I think I did my first 30 just on my own um just to see if I could and then I just did a 40 on my own just to see if I could and then I started doing some races with Luke um and I think my training was I think I thought I was doing a lot of miles at the time but Mm. I think if I compare it to now I was probably just doing maybe 30 30 miles a week 40 miles sometimes and I don't think there was any structure to what I was doing at all um I think I again I was just running for fun and running for how I felt and I, I think sometimes just running to how you feel isn't a bad thing is it no no not at all and I think yeah I mean you know in yourself don't you if you're I I've certainly had weeks where I'm just exhausted and I think if I if I run if I do a really long run this Sunday it's going to be counterproductive because it's going to make it's going to compound that exhaustion so sometimes you need you need a bit of recovery and if you're feeling good then then you can push on for sure what's your Nicola wants to know what's your typical weekly mileage what's the, and also what's the biggest week biggest mileage week you've ever you've ever run have you kept track of that oh so uh usually my usual week is probably like 60 70 miles I'll probably do like 30 30 maybe a bit more during the week like commuting and little trail runs with Murphy hmm. and then we'll have a couple of big days on the weekend um, in terms of the biggest mileage week that we've done, we did an accumulator one month. Um, so like we ran the days of the month. So the last week we did seven marathons in seven days. Oh, wow. So that was the biggest mileage week. <laughs> what, how many miles is that then? 26, yeah. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Ridiculous. But yeah. Yeah. So it was quite a lot. Of... <laughs> so oh, we God. ended up two ultras in there too didn't we yeah (laughs) amazing amazing um I hope it's not an uncomfortable question but Anna wants to know how you cope with periods particularly if it uh, clashes with an event or on longer training runs yeah it's something that that we don't really talk about often but it's something that I definitely am in tune with knowing that actually if it's that time of the month if, even if I'm training, even if I'm in the lakes with Luke, you just feel sluggish mm. and just it makes things really difficult. So I think it's just being in tune with that and actually saying, I think actually we're going to go for a short run today or we might go a bit slower today or whatever it is. Um, I think in terms of racing, I think it's tricky, isn't it? And I think this is yeah. to be honest, I don't love races. Um, I find it hard to commit to being somewhere at a certain time because you don't know how you're going to feel. Um, so I do like lean a lot more towards kind of solo things, but obviously sometimes it can't be avoided. And um, I think it's just like, you know, being in touch with how you feel. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that, again, as you say, that's it comes into its own with making your own adventure because then you can you can work around what's happening with your body. And, and when it is that time of the month, just be gentle with yourself and, you know, give yourself a break. Mm. Um, somebody wants to know if you have a, a dream race or a dream FKT, if you could have <laughs> one, one, one thing, do one thing, get one FKT, what would it be? I'm, re I'm really, I mean, at the moment, I'm really interested in the Southwest Coastal Path. Yeah. Um, Did you that, read the, the Salt Path, that book? I didn't know. Okay, didn't... I'm, I'm going to send it to you because it's absolutely beautiful for those people who've, who've read it. <laughs> Sarah's, <laughs> Sarah's really excited about that. Um, yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> beautiful um and it was Reese wasn't it it was Reese Jenkins yeah who, um and I think just watching his um it was like a YouTube thing wasn't it but it just mm. looked amazing I think he made it look easy didn't he do you know the way he split it up and he was running like 40 miles a day in lots of ways he made it look so easy and, and I know it won't and I know it is really like mm. undulating it is um but it's just been in my head for a while and I'd love it <laughs> yeah I think sometimes when you get something in your head you have to you have to go down and you just you have to see a bit of it just to um just to just to try it I've had the Essex way in my head for about two years because I for those of you watching I'm not in the peaks I live in Essex and I've done sections of it and um yeah, I'd I'd love to do the the whole thing. Not for an FKT, although there's not a woman's FKT. Um, it would be the FKT. <laughs> it would be, it would be. But um, yeah, I just love to do it in its entirety, and it's it's a much like shorter and uh, not as undulating route as the Southwest Coast Path. But like you say, once you get something stuck in your head, you just you have to do it. You have to do it that Mary set a date <laughs> <laughs> one final question and then we'll we'll let everybody everybody go um do you have any treatments that that you do uh regularly like massage therapy yoga do you have a foam roller um I do have a foam roller I don't use it <laughs> um I do have a <laughs> I never. I do have one of the. I do have a massage gun that I use um, quite regularly. Uh, I do go for a massage. I am partial to a massage. Usually, I'll go. I don't know why, but it's just like it's a pre-race ritual. I'll get one like a week before. It's like <laughs> just a. It's like a good luck charm. Is the thing that I do now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do, I do like the massage gun though. I think that that works really well. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um. Sarah, thank you so much for for joining us this evening and for everybody who's tuned in. Thank you for um, for joining us. Um, yeah, it's been really interesting. And, and I um, I hope everybody that that's watching has found this inspirational because I certainly have. Gosh, um, it's been great to, to talk to you, get to know a little bit more about your journey, where you've come from, where you're going. And um, I'm really excited to, to see what happens. And like I said before, when you do Bob Graham, I'm coming up, I'm bringing cake. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone. Um, we have been recording. And um, so I'm gonna, we'll put a video of this up on YouTube. We'll let you know when it's, when it's there. And, um, and yeah, if you're training for an ultra at the moment, like I said, check out Harry or check out our How to Run 100 Miles guide. Um, and we've got some great bundles as well if you need any kits. So check those out and enjoy your evening. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye.